Hello, my name is Harrison Hatridge, and today I'm going to be talking about baking your lighting and using light probes and reflection probes to make your scene look better. Now, to be completely honest with you, I usually don't bake my lighting and use light probes all that much, because um, you can actually make your scene look quite nice without that, which I'll show you as well. Um, but it can bring your scene to the next level, and if your computer is able to, I would recommend doing it. Now, first thing we're going to do is start by baking your lighting. Now, if you don't know what baking lighting is, basically what it's doing is, first off, you will set anything that you want baked to static up here in the top right corner. And what it's going to do is lay a light map on everything. And what that means is it's basically a texture with light data. So it will each individual part of this and you can increase the resolution decrease the resolution of your light map it will basically just be a texture you're laying on everything um, which can give you a bit more detailed and accurate lighting without affecting performance because it's just a pre-made texture and it, it can look good now the problem with baking lighting is it can take a long time and bog down your computer a lot there are ways to get around this and still make it look good which I will show you as well but again before we bake lighting First things first, everything that you need baked must be st static. I'm going to be moving this around. This will not be baked. Don't mind this right now. That shouldn't even be there. It, there are no light probes because of the last bake I did. Um, we'll talk about that later. Now, before you bake your lighting, again, set your objects to static and your directional light should be static as well. Now, the mode can either be baked or mixed. I usually put it on mixed because um, I just think it works a bit better. Usually, for me, I get better results. Now, after you've done that, you can go into your lighting tab. If you don't have this up here with all your other tabs, if you go into Window, Rendering, you can click here to get this tab. Now, you can do a lot of cool stuff in here. Make sure that there is a lighting settings here. You can just create a new one, and it will save it down here in your assets. Um, so make sure you have one of these, or you won't be able to do anything. Now, in here, we can... So in our mixed lighting, you can see... So we have baked global illumination turned on and I'm gonna keep it as shadow mask right now okay so down to light mapping settings I usually try to make sure it's using my GPU um, although sometimes I've gotten better results with CPU it's kinda weird just mess around with that now here's where you need to be very 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 careful <laughs> because this is how you crash your computer with changing these numbers for the sake of this I'm not gonna change any of this you can change the amount of bounces the amount of environment samples it does, and direct samples, direct samples, um, and the resolution of the light map. So, textiles per unit. Basically, just the resolution. <laughs> um, and the light map size. Again, changing these will all make it take longer. Compression, right now I have mine on high quality. And all this stuff you can change here. We're just going to keep it the same for now. And it will show you what baking device you're using. Okay. So when you're ready to bake your lighting, you're going to go to generate lighting. Now, if you do auto-generate, it will auto-generate everything as you make changes. Now, I usually don't use this. The reason this could be nice, though, is the first time you bake your lighting in your scene, if you haven't yet, is usually when it's going to take the longest. And if you make a bunch of changes and then go to bake your lighting after you've added a bunch of lights and, like, made your scene ten times bigger, it's going to it's gonna take a while. So I would recommend baking frequently. So I'm going to click bake and it gives you, you'll see it's making our light map or texture map here and it'll give you a time estimate here. It's usually not accurate at all. <laughs> it's just, just an FYI. So it'll take a little bit of time here. But if I made like a small change, like again, keep in mind too, actually, this is one important thing to note out. After it has baked this, if you start to move things, it will be inaccurate because it baked it for the specific position things are in. So just keep that in mind. If you move things, you need to rebake your lighting. If you move your static objects anyway, that are being, you know, which have a light map applied to them. One important thing to note is this is baking too. You won't really be able to tell much of a difference in this scene between the baked and the non-baked. And that's simply just because it's such a simple setup with one directional light and just a few cubes. So keep in mind, it does make a difference um, <laughs> in more advanced setups. Okay. So, we have our baked lighting. That's great. Now, we're going to use what are called light probes. Light probes are useful for two things. One, they can make your shadows and stuff more accurate, and your lighting around your whole scene more accurate. And two, they will actually affect non-static objects and how lighting is applied to them. 
So I'm going to show you how to set up your light probes now to bring it a little bit, make your scene look a little bit better. So, and again, you probably won't see much of a difference here because it's so simple. But the point of this is that it's simple, so it's easy to show you. So, to add a, um, a light probe group, you're going to go to light. Down here, click light probe group. Now, let's go back to our inspector and zero this out. First thing I'm going to do is drag it up. Now, make sure the probes are not, are not. Um, also, you can see, actually, this kind of shows down here. Um, when we baked our lighting, it this part's actually under <laughs> things, so it's a little freaked out under here, but the player doesn't see that anyway. Anyway, make sure these are not intersecting with things, or else it will struggle <laughs> and not give you accurate results. Because each one of these points is basically taking, getting lighting data and color data from the area around it, and communicating with the other points and also the non-static objects in your scene. So be careful about that. Now, the first thing I do in any scene, even if it's not a perfect square, is try to get these four different corners here to their proper areas. So first thing also, when editing the light probe positions, you're gonna click edit light probe positions, and then you can click on these individually and move them. Now, oopsies. Now what I'm gonna do is click one and then hold shift and click all these. And we're gonna move them up to about the top here. Oopsies, it's probably good enough. And we're going to go ahead and grab all four of these. Drag them over here. And then we're going to grab all four of these. And drag them over here to fill the corners. Now, this will not do much. <laughs> because essentially what I need to do is whenever there's a change, so like here there's a color change or shadow change, we need to add light probes. And I'll show you how. So, let's start with the color change here. Basically, when it's in the blue area over here, we want the lighting to be, we want it to be a bit blue, if that makes sense. Um, but then when it's in the red area, we want it to be a bit red in between, kind of a mix. So, what we're going to do, oopsies, first I need to click edit light probe positions. I grab these here. Now I could add probe right here like that, but I'm not going to do that. I usually just grab probes that already exist and duplicating them, duplicate them using control D. And drag them in right here. Duplicate again, drag right here. Now, these are getting data. These ones are getting data from the blue side and the red side, and they'll communicate with each other and to this here to make it more accurate. So that's the color change done. Now, if you look in this scene, we have a shadow right here. So let's do something about that. Grab this. I'm gonna bring it to right about there. And we're also gonna put one right in there. And that won't be perfect, but it's not bad. You can mess around with them and see what results you get, but that should be okay for this scene. Now, once you've laid out your light probes, you will need to bake your lighting again. It will go a lot faster this time. Bam, already done. Okay, so now that we've done that, and it's probably going to be really hard to tell, but at least I can show you how it's working. So let's move it over here. You can see that it's in the, it's in the blue side right now. Each one of these points are getting light and color data. So this one's like, oh, it's darker over here. Oh, it's lighter over here. And... It's a bit blue. So this is being affected. The color of the lighting applied to this is being affected by each of these probes here. So in this area, it's actually going to have a slight hue of blue. And it may be really hard to tell in this example. That's OK. But as long as you see how the probes are affecting, it's fine. Now, as I move it closer to the red, you'll see now it's grabbing data from over here, too. So it'll apply a bit of a red hue to it as it gets closer and closer. And now it's in the red area. Same with the shadow. And of course, shadows would have already been applied to it, but it just makes it a little more accurate. And again, you probably can't tell the hue difference here. It's very subtle, but it is being applied to it. And I have a better example that I'll show you after this. Okay, so now that we have that set up, that's great and all. So how about reflection probes, though, which will give you more accurate reflections. So let's actually make this material here so I can show you what I mean. make it a little more metallic and reflective so you can see here we have a reflection but it's just reflecting the skybox like that's it we want it to also like in real life it will reflect the area around it and this will also make the lighting more accurate now luckily reflection probes are way easier to set up than light probes um, 
in my opinion, of course. So let's go to Reflection Probe, which is literally, let me zero this out, just a giant box you move around. Think of it like it's kind of similar to moving around a collider. You can already see as I put this in here, it actually has already had an effect a little bit. Now we're going to move this up into our scene here. And the reason for that is it's already getting data. So, but when we bake it, it's going to look a lot better. So let's go in here and you'll want to click this button here to edit the, uh, what does it say? Adjust the probe zone of effect. So, well, that's weird. Oopsies. So all you have to do is grab these little points here and just simply drag. That's it. It's very easy. Drag over to here. Doesn't have to be perfect for this example. And I think this is slightly in that, so let's not do that. Okay. Now, once you've done that, make sure it's set to type baked. You can also use these for real time. And we're going to click bake. And bam! It's baked. Now, immediately you'll see, it may be a bit hard to tell actually. Actually, let me let me go ahead and uh, increase the reflection of this. Make it even a bit... Oh, actually, I think it's still affecting the... That's interesting. Is it because it's not set to static? Make sure you do that. I think that was why. Aha! Okay, so now look at that. You can kind of see in the reflection, it's actually reflecting the environment around it. So it'll be more accurate and actually look better. <laughs> so, and as I move this too, it'll continue doing that. Now, if you wanted to make a complete mirror, you'd have the smoothness set all the way up, metallic all the way up as well. Oopsies. And bam, you literally, that, that's how you make a mirror. Congratulations, you made a mirror. And so this is now communicating with the light probe and the reflection probe, light probes and reflection probes. Be more accurate. I'm going to show you an example that's a lot more, a bit more advanced. Um, just a little scene I made for this. Now, save this. This is another scene I made. Right now, this is using light probes and reflection probes. Now, this might actually be a better example if we get a cube in here. Let's zero this out. Now, this took a lot more time to set up. So you may be able to see here, yeah, you can kind of see a bit better here how it's affecting it. You can see it gets lighter more gradually towards there. Now, there are a lot more probes set up for this scene. So if we go here, you'll see there's quite a bit of probes here. We got our corners and stuff as well. and But areas where there's changes in lighting, I set up especially in here. Now, the reflection probe was pretty simple. I just dragged it across the whole thing. <laughs> um, you could probably, there's maybe better ways to do that. I've never put multiple in others, but I don't know if you really need to. Um, now. Let's actually look at the difference that the reflection probes and light probes cost you, because you can actually see it in this example here. So this is so this is this scene with light probes and a reflection probe. Now I'm gonna go to the one without it. Yes, save. Oh dear god, I clicked on the wrong thing. Okay. Hold on. Okay, this is with it. Without it, with it. Without it, with it. Without it, with it. You can see the shadows are a bit more accurate. And also, this is baked lighting as well, by the way. This scene is not baked at all. Now, I do want to point out, though, that... Oh, jeez, what's going on? That, yes, this does look better. But that also, this doesn't look bad. Again, you can make your scenes, and I do have a little fly-through camera. This is the non-baked, no light probes, no reflection probes, probes. I do want to point out that you can make things look decent without baking your lighting or using any light probes. And this scene is... Kind of bad, not going to lie. It's Again, I made this in like maybe 30 to 45 minutes. But it doesn't look horrible, right? Now, let's go to our baked one again and do the same fly through. You can see the ambient occlusion and shadows are more accurate, but the other one doesn't look terrible, and both of them don't look great anyway. Um, but it's also very dark here. I would probably lighten that up a bit just for the player. But the point is, you can still make things look Oh, gosh. You can still make things look really good, even without light probes or reflection probes. And a lot of that comes down to post-processing and how you set up your lighting in your scene, um, which is not something I'm going to in, get into in this video. Thank you for watching.